Hallelujah. How's everybody know? <laughs> Praise God. God is good all the time. You know, there's so many things that are happening. It's hard to keep up sometimes. But thank God we don't have to. We just got to stay close to the Lord. Amen. You know, one of the things that we, that song that we sang, New Wine, brings new fire. Amen. More power. Until you come to a place where you're willing to deny yourself. Where you're not first, where your emotions are not first, where you're not being led by yourself, you're being led by the Spirit. Many people don't even realize that. There can't may not be new wine. Because there's a crushing Everybody must be crushed. Everyone say, I must be crushed. You know, you don't get wine out of fresh grapes unless you crush them. You don't get oil out of olives unless you crush them. Amen? So there is a crushing that's going on. God is pressing us very strongly. And the reason for that is so that all the impurities can come to the surface. So we can begin to recognize those things that are causing us to stumble. Amen? You know, and if we don't recognize it, it's going to keep us adrift, misled. We are right now in what I want to call a prophetic new year. We have entered it. We are in the season right now and, and fulfilling in the feast and celebrating the feast of trumpets. And that is be the new year for the Jewish calendar. It's called Rosh Hashanah. Something like that. And in this, it is a tremendous time for our life and for history because everything revolves around the Feast of the Lord. And those feasts must be fulfilled. And only Jesus can fulfill them. So, so many times things are a rehearsal of a feast to be fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled the first three already. And then the fourth one was sent by the Spirit of God when people got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now we are celebrating from, it's a two-day feast from the 6th to the 8th called the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah. And in this feast, then follows that is what they call 10 days of awe, which is atonement. Ten days of atonement. Then comes the third feast and the final feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. And when Jesus comes to fulfill all of these feasts, he will establish the kingdom on earth for 1,000 years in the millennium in the fulfillment of the Feast of Tabernacles because he will be in the tabernacle on earth in Jerusalem. Would you turn to Matthew 24, please? Hallelujah. Matthew 24, <clears throat> verse 3. Hallelujah. Verse 3, let's speak it. Now, as Jesus said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying... What, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age that is the age of grace. <clears throat> and Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no one does what? Deceive you. For many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many. So if people are not disciplined, if they are not consistent if they're not alert, they're going to be easily deceived. They're going to be easily drifted. They'll be still too caught up in the world. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you, you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. 
For nation will rise against nation, that is known as ethnic group, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. Are there famines? Yeah. Are there pestilence? Yes. Are there earthquakes in various places? All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to what? Tribulation. They will kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my namesake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and hate one another. I'm telling you right now, there's much betrayal even in the body of Christ. People walking away. People are walking away from the house, the house God has established them. People are walking away from following the Lord. There's a tremendous falling away right now. Look at the division that's been brought by this false flag virus thing. Much division. And that's the purpose of the enemy. And many people are taking medication and it's not helping them. He says then in verse um, 10, And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endure, endures to the end will be saved. In this gospel, the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of the house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there'll be what? Great tribulation, such as not been seen the beginning of the world until this time, nor, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, the fle no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So we know that even right now that we are in the beginning of birth pangs and we're almost coming to the end of it. We're hearing of wars, rumors of wars. All kinds of things are happening tremendously. Go to verse 29. It says immediately after tribulation, so you got the beginning of sorrows, you got tribulation, then you got great tribulation. So he goes back and talks about tribulation. He says, so immediately after tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will what? Send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. This is known as the rapture because it says immediately after tribulation. Because a rapture is not going to be before tribulation. It will be in mid-tribulation. And he will send out his angels with a great sound of trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree when, it branches, when its branches have already become tender and it puts forth leaves and you know that summer is near, near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near and at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Very powerful. Now, he says this generation. Well, Israel became a generation in 1948. Or uh, a nation in its own self. So a generation is approximately 70 years. Amen? So 2018 would have, would have started the, would have been that generation. But it's still 2018 continuing. Because it can be between 70 to 80 years. So in that, we are the generation of the Lord's return. There is no doubt about it. 
But we've got to be warriors, not wimps. We can't be misled by the foolishness of this world. We must be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You know, we just read that, uh, and the Lord will appear in the air, in the sky, in the clouds. Amen? But he won't touch the earth. He doesn't touch the earth to the end of tribulation. In verse 13, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, let's speak it. But I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died for, and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. In other words, those who've passed and are with the Lord. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, not on the earth. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Again, the Feast of Trumpets, Rahashanah, Right now, September 6th, from sundown to September 8th to sunrise, it's a two-day celebration. Again, then it starts, I was telling you, the 10 days of all, it's called Yom Kippur, or the Feast of Atonement. It is to complete everything at the Feast of Tabernacles in preparation. There's a prophetic new year right now. <clears throat> Now, there are things that happen during this time of feast. If you recall, one of the great shifts and things that turned things around in this country and globally, if you think about it, was 9-11. When the Twin Towers came down, when this country was attacked, it changed everything. But in that, it set a ripple effect that changed not only the world, but it gave government more control over civilians and people. They changed the laws. It took away and weakened our weakness, our, our freedom. More and more. So what they do is they create. Now you got to remember something. This is not a political thing or military. This is a, a, this is a battle between Christ and Antichrist. These are all Antichrist regimes. All servants of darkness that have infiltrated all of these areas. And they've been waiting for the special moment right now. You know when people say, well, it's Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter. It's Antichrist or Christ. Amen? One or the other. So in this, we see that we have reached a prophetic year right now. And, and even, even in when 9-11 happened, you know, we were celebrating, what, 20 years ago? 21 years ago? 20 years later, we have entered another prophetic shift to start the new year. It's going to be a year of chaotic vindication. I know that may sound strange. This new year that's starting now. See, we're not going by the man's calendar. We're going by God's calendar. It's a year of chaotic vindication. And you know, when you think about it, the word says when we are weak, then we are strong. Right now, everything looks pretty weak. Jerusalem looks weak. United States looks weak. Everything looks weak. But when we are weak, then we are strong because we're not relying on us. We're relying on God. Amen? Hmm. So even that, uh, there's going to be attacks against the prophetic symbols. The, there are prophetic symbolic nations. One is Israel and one is America. Those two are like brother and sister. They're like twins. They're like the two witnesses. These two nations are the witnesses of the world. We know that in Israel was the law in Moses. Amen. And the United States is known as the spirit. That's why we have the Statue of Liberty representing the spirit. 
So we have the law and the spirit. But there will be a great deception has captured the minds of humanity. Great deception. And fear has gripped their hearts in a tremendous way. This is globally, not just here. Amen. So we've got to understand that right now we are entering a prophetic new year. And it's almost as a repeat of the year of 9-11. But we are all looking weak right now in these countries. The world is all looking weak. It's been taken captive tremendously. In Revelation chapter 9. Is everybody okay? Prophetic New Year. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sounds of cherubs, chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them. The angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in, in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek, he has the name of Apollyon. Now I want you to know that this is Revelation chapter 9, verse 11. Does everybody get it? How is this? What is he talking about? Their king, Apollyon. Does everybody understand it? The prophetic conclusion not completely fulfilled yet in this chapter, but it is the second rehearsal. The first was the Tower of Babel when God brought that down with Nimrod, who was a Nephilim king. Now we have Apollyon, the king of beasts, as the Antichrist warlord who will be released and this is who they worship. He's Apollyon. He's their king. He's the Antichrist warlord. And this is where the Antichrist satanic rituals, this is who they worship. He comes in many forms as the serpent, as the dragon, as an angel of light. Does everybody understand? Okay. Go to Isaiah 60. Hallelujah. We are in battle against a fallen Nephilim race. These are fallen angels. Isaiah 60 verse 1. You know, for 
this last year, the Lord kept putting it on my heart about this feast is going to shift. For the next three months, you're going to see men, many shifts. In verse 1, let's, let's speak it. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. You know what? Do we have darkness covering the earth right now? Yeah. And deep darkness, the people, that's called great deception. But the Lord will rise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. And they gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar. Your daughter shall be nursed at your side. Then you will see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy. Because the abundance of of the sea shall be turned to you, and the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Does everybody see that? This is the great shift. Now, you know what? Even in chaotic times, things change. Remember, the wealth came to Joseph. There is wealth of the wicked laid up for the righteous, but if you're not in position, it will pass you over. You won't miss it. People are missing many divine appointments because they're too caught up in the world. Distress will cover the earth and the light of righteousness shall shine. Not unrighteous, not unrighteous offenders of gossipers and traitors against the kingdom. They will not shine. Again, the Lord's house is vital to God. In Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 38 and verse 7. Ezekiel 38 and verse 7. If you read Ezekiel 38 and 39, these are talking about the wars. In verse 7 it says, prepare yourself and be what? Be ready. You and all your companies that are gathered about you, be a what? Guard for them. After many days you will be visited. In the latter years you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel which had long been desolate. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud, you and all your troops and many peoples with you. Thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. Is there an evil plan going on? Yeah. You will say, I will go up against the land of the unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. To take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against the people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock goods, who dwell in the midst of the land, Shabal Danan merchants of Tarshish and all their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty to carry away silver and gold and take away livestock and goods to take away plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, thus says the Lord. Now I want you to understand Gog is associated with Russia. But also, it also represents every Antichrist nation. I'll talk a little bit more about them. Because they are gathering together. Listen, Afghanistan was not lost by coincidence. It was given away. And the Antichrist regime that is in the United States allowed it to happen. 
Why? Because Russia, Syria, and Iran have now taken Afghanistan. And they're getting closer and closer to Israel to make their attack. Now, there's going to be an attack against the United States and Israel. And these attacks, some of them will be unseen because we're getting hacked. Amen. There'll be economic. We're getting, we are, already we're in a, uh, a, a chemical warfare with all this foolishness and these flus and whatever. So we're being attacked in every area economically. I mean, our own government is paying farmers to destroy their own crops. More money than they could by selling them. Only the patriots are refusing that. But there are many who've been sold out. Many have been sold out to money. Look at the debt we're going into in this country. It can never come out. It's impossible to come out of debt. And you know it has to, it's got to come to an end. There must be some kind of reset. And we're getting ready to hit a reset. That's what this is all about. There's going to be an economic reset. There's going to be banking resets. Everything. It will no longer be just money printing money. Everything will be, have to be backed by gold and silver. Everything. Everything is going to be reset. And God is going to reset it. Hello. Therefore, verse 14. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, thus says the Lord on that day when my people Israel dwell safely, Will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north. You and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses in a great company and mighty army. You will come up against my people Israel like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days. Are we in the latter days? <clears throat> that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hollowed in you, O God, before their eyes. In other words, God's going to crush them. He will not allow them to take over. Is everybody okay? Thus says the Lord God, Are you he of whom I have spoken in the former days? My servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied for years in those days that I would bring you against them. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord, that my fury will show my, in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Surely in that day there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish in the sea and the birds in the heavens and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep on the earth and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake by my presence. The mountains will show, shall be thrown down, the st steep places will fall, and every wall shall have fallen to the ground. And I will call for the sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Even man's sword will be against his brother. And I will bring him to judgment with pestilence, with bloodshed. And I will rain on him, on, the, on his troops, and on the many of the peoples who are with him. Flooding, raining, ha great hailstorms, fire, and brimstones. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations then they shall know that I am the Lord. So remember, even in chaos, God always shows himself as the victor. He's the rescuer. Amen? So in this, we see God, the Antichrist nation, Syria, Iran, Russia, and China are all gathering together. You got to remember, China's been buying up stuff and trying to take over everything, and they've been cheating us on all of the uh, trade and, and all the taxes and so uh, the tariffs and everything until Trump got in. It wasn't until when Trump, God sent his servant Trump in that we began to collect what was due to this country, billions, billions of taxes from trade from China. Do you know that they weren't charging China anything? They were just trading with us, and we had to pay for our stuff to go there. And Trump said, no way. That's done and over with. It's billions of dollars turned. Now things are changing again because we got Antichrist in office. Does everybody understand? Hallelujah. They're going to attack the two witnesses of the Creator, Israel and America. But they will be cut short and crushed to begin 
full surrender. They will try again openly and not so secretly. Remember, they've been doing stuff secretly, but there's going to be events that will be openly besides secretly. The world will see again the strength of the two witness nations as vindication will begin the new year of the glory of the Lord. So even though that everything looks weak, it's going to turn around. Everything is going to turn around. This country will become strong again. Israel will become strong. Both Israel and the United States will start to rise up and become stronger and stronger and stronger. And they will battle for one another. And of course, for that to happen, that means they got to kick out all these morons from office, right? Revelation 5. So something's going to happen real soon. Revelation chapter 5. In verse 1. <clears throat> and I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and to read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the what the saints that's why god is doing this i'm telling you right now there's been there's never been so much prayer and intercession gone on in history of mankind than there has been in this last two years and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and every people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our god and we shall reign on the earth then i looked and i heard the voice of many angels around the throne the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousands and thousands of thousands that's a lot of people saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power be to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb forever and ever. It is the prayers of the saints that have ignited the move of God <laughs> for a great chaos crisis, but for harvest. Again, harvest doesn't come without a kind of crisis. Amen? When 9-11 happened, people fl went to the churches. But then they became compromised and lazy and, and, and getting back to their lives and so forth. <clears throat> In the book of Daniel, chapter 12, Is everybody there? Let's start at verse 1. 
And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. That's when Israel became a nation. Now we know that there are events that are still coming to pass that have not been fulfilled yet. Even to that time, and at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found written in the what? The book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall be awake. Some to everlasting life and to some to shame and everlasting contempt or hell. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. For many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. In other words, technology shall increase when we already see that happening. Then I, Daniel, looked and there stood two others, one on this river bank and one on the other river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and half time, which is three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people have been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall be what? Do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand. Do we see that now? But the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation which was spoken by Daniel is set, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way to the end for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. <clears throat> so we see here, this is what we are talking about mid-tribulation. So we are coming to the end of the beginning of sorrows. We are getting ready to start tribulation. When tribulation starts, you know, it's not going to be to where, for some people, you won't even know you're in it. Because things are going to be, there's going to be a great shift. Things will be prospering for the body. <clears throat> things will be getting back together. The country will be getting stronger and stronger. And all of a sudden, certain things are going to be happening. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere... Great tribulation is going to start. And things are going to change. Why? Because they have to build the temple. <clears throat> and then the Antichrist will step into the temple and proclaim himself as God. In that time, the two witnesses that will be here will be shot and killed. And then they will raise up three days later and we will go with them home. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Second Timothy. No, let's go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91. <clears throat> First eight verses, let's speak it. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the prevalence of pestilence, which is going all over the place. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will take refuge. You shall trust, uh, he, trust his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see what? 
the reward of the wicked. Those are those that are hiding in the secret place and covered, amen, connection with the Lord. They will see the reward of the wicked. We are going to see the reward of the wicked. We're going to see much vindication begin to happen. 2 Timothy 3 verse 10. I know some of us have been thinking, man, what's taking so stinking long? But God has a plan. You got to remember, not enough people have been awakened yet. <laughs> For some people, they got to like almost lose everything to get awake. <clears throat> Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. I was talking to somebody the other day, and one of the things they said to me, yeah, I'm just not sure what Biden's going to do. You're not sure. Yeah, he's not doing nothing. What do you, you got nothing to worry about. He's not going to do a thing. He hasn't done anything since he got in office but destroy this country. But again, we're not fighting political. We're fighting anti-Christ regimes. In verse 10, 2 Timothy 3, verse 10. Let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be in Antioch, and Icium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will what? Suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and, be, and, and assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in G Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine or for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work and every battle. Amen. Now, you know, again, this is where we've got to be continuing in the things that there's not enough people maintaining what they've learned. They're drifting, compromising, getting lazy, becoming self-centered, emotional followers instead of spirit followers. And what's happened is their hearts have been hardened, unable to receive correction. And Proverbs 12 Proverbs 12. In verse 1. Everybody there? Do you love instruction? Do you like correction? You better. Or God's going to say you're stupid. Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. And there is a spirit of stupid going around. Let me tell you. It's incredible how many people are stupid. And that's just blinded and deceived. You know, They're, that deaf and dumb spirit. That lazy spirit. That deceptive spirit. It's incredible to me. A good man attains favor from the Lord, but a man of wicked intentions, he will what? Condemn. A man is not established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous cannot be what? Moved. So don't let the spirit of stupid get on you. Amen? Matthew 13. God chastens those he loves. Correction, direction, protection. Matthew 13, verse 24. <clears throat> Let's speak it. In another parable, he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. 
So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the what? Wheat. That's why things are taking a while. Does everybody get it? Let both grow together until the harvest. Are we, getting, are we entering the harvest? Yes. And at that time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barns. That's why things are taking a while. Because there'll be a lot of innocent people hurt. Amen. So that parable of the wheat and tares is so vitally important to understand. Daniel 7. Verse 21. Let's speak it together. Daniel 7, verse 21. I was watching, and the same horn was making war against the saints. And prevailing against them until the ancient of days came and a judgment was made in the favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Then he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom on the earth, which shall be different from the other kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from the king, this kingdom and another shall rise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings, and shall speak pompous words against the Most High, and shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and laws. Well, we see that happening. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half. And that's three and a half years. But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion and consume and destroy it forever. The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole earth shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So we know the end result is everything's going to be turned over. Amen? To the saints. <laughs> There's going to be a transition of the beginning of the greatest harbor, harvest and chaos to reset government, to reset the economy and, and currency, political, military. It's going to be a tremendous shift of time. This will take endurance, patience, wisdom, and discernment, all abounding in the anointing. We can't be swayed or misled. And I want to close it, First John chapter 2. We prepare ourselves by staying close to the Lord, staying close to his house, staying in fellowship, staying in assembly. And this is amazing to me that it started already. We're already in it. We're going to see 10 days of awe or the uh, atonement. And I believe it's going to be 10 days of awe, like a lot of things are going to start to happen. I think Bush said that, but then he said, oh, but he lied. <laughs> Struck and all, whatever. First John chapter 2, verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. So they got taken out by the Antichrist spirit. Probably because they got stupid. 
Verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lies are the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who will tr try or attempt to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning these things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So we are at a critical time right now. Very critical, but very powerful. What an awesome time to be alive. But we want to be alert. We want to be consistent. We want to be able to endure. We want to be ready. And that's what this is about tonight. Just being ready so that we're not side, side swiped or whatever. So that we, when things begin to happen, we're not going to freak out. We won't be afraid of or anything. Why? Because the Lord be with us who can be against us. Amen? Remember, this country is called by the hand of God. And there will be many alliances that are coming alongside this country. It's the same thing with Israel. And they will stand up to, to battle for one another. But God will be magnified when other countries <laughs> are brought down. He's going to shut them down. I don't know how long or whatever, but there are, when, when great tribulation comes, we're out of here, then everything's <laughs> loosed, you know? <laughs> you don't want to be here then. You want to get the first bus out of here. Praise God. Make sure you got a ticket. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for preparing us and arming us. We ask for the wisdom and discernment that we may endure, be strong in the Lord, and the power of your might. Grant us vision, dreams, revelations, and continue to empower us to say yes to you and no to the enemy or any distractions. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.